let's now take a look at that uh, mouse spline and uh, mouse spline is really a parametric spline generator object with a complete L system built into it well um, I'm sure that to many of you L system doesn't mean much but uh, L system in Cina 4D is uh, really called a turtle and uh, I will show you that uh, turtle system in the last lesson and the reason for it is uh, it's really in the technical realm of things and somewhat complicated and I think you will be better off without it uh, at the moment so we'll now cover this two modes this simple and spline and we will cover the turtle or L system or uh, Lindenmeyer system at the very end of this uh, training so let's start with the uh, simple mode currently you can see if i hide my axis that uh, this is really nothing uh, spectacular it's just a simple green line in the viewport so it really doesn't look like much but uh, let's go briefly over this first setting so this should be familiar so start really defines the starting point end point defines the end point and the offset of that uh, spline so really consider this as a spline which it actually is so this uh, grow mode currently won't do really much in this uh, simple presentation but uh, it really determines how the spline will be built if this uh, end or start or even this offset is animated so it can grow a complete spline or in separate segments we will cover this later on example so it will be much clearer these guys this extend start or end will really determine what happens with the spline when it shoots over this uh, hundred and uh, zero values and uh, that also may seem a little bit complicated but uh, I'll show you that in fact it is not so the most important thing about this uh, most spline is that it can accept both effectors and particle modifiers this is really important so you have a lot of creative freedom on this most spline now let me show you the most simplest usage of this most spline and under this simple tab we have a bunch of options so first is really simple is the length steps is the number of points on that spline segments if i will play with this value now it will do nothing but uh, as i start uh, playing with these settings then it will all make sense and this simply rotates this spline according to selected uh, axis so it will rotate in the uh, heading pitch or bank direction and uh, let's say if i set this to maybe say 180 and increase this segments so i will get a new segment for each of these numbers so completely new spline relatively speaking we can go really high let's say 50 and this is still all parametric you can control these guys let me just frame this a little bit you can control these guys with this curve bend and twist so you can curve those guys you can bend them in any direction you can already see that these are really really interesting results or currently this twist won't do anything simply because the twist is twisting the spline in a direction we cannot see so it's really twisting it like uh, this and you really cannot see the results let me undo that if you enable other of these guys you will see the result of that uh, twisting so let's zero this out this width is simply the width of this uh, spline in the viewport and it really determines the width of this if you drop this under another generator so maybe i could show you that uh, all these effectors are working on that mouse spline so let's uh, add uh, maybe a random effector and you will see the results it's uh, chaotic i will in fact create a falloff let's say spherical and uh, 
Here under Effector, I will change this to Noise, so we have a temporal value, and we'll hit Play, and uh, you can see the result. So maybe I will move this guy upwards. So a really, really flexible tool. So maybe I can, uh, maybe I could even scale this Noise, and you will see that uh, it will deform it uh, a little bit different. So maybe this was a really good example for this scale of the noise. Let me stop this, go back. And I showed you this because I wanted you to understand that all these parameters still work. So regardless of uh, what you set in terms of effectors or the values you change here, you can change the segmentation. Those guys will still work. So that is really, really awesome. Let's stop this. And uh, Let's in fact have a bit of fun with this. I will set this to 360, so we have a complete nice uh, circular, no spline. I'll add a step effector to this, and uh, under the parameters, I will enable position, and uh, I think that would be, yes, it would be Y. So let's say 100 on Y. And uh, if you thought that uh, you're unable to set materials, to your mouse spline, then uh, you are wrong. You can apply hair materials to your splines. So that means you can apply the material to mouse splines. So let's uh, create something uh, really simple. I will get rid of one, one of these and load just a simple color and apply this to our mouse spline. Now you won't see anything until I do a render and in fact you can see it really renders that spline red. Now, even though you have a bunch of settings here, those guys under any effector will still work. For example, you can map this to this spline graph. So you can create really interesting effects like uh, black holes and uh, stuff like that. So really, really powerful. Maybe we could even expand on this setup and uh, I will add a uh, time effector and uh, maybe set you see rotations really won't work on the spline because uh, you will be simply rotating the points so by effectors you're affecting the points and uh, pretty much the position values will work only let's set this also to let's say maybe 50 something like this so this is a time effector and it works only with time and we have to press play to see the results. So how about this? You can get some really, really cool results with it. Let me stop this. Now, you shouldn't forget that this is an actual spline. So you can maybe create a profile for it. You can also create a sweep nerves and use this mouse spline as a path for this profile. So it will work and uh, one thing that uh, is really important now, the width of this profile is controlled by the width setting on most spline. So let's enter maybe five here and uh, you can see the result. And that's another way for you to render the most spline. You can apply the material to sweep nerves. And this parametric approach where you set everything with values is really, really great. So we could even set this uh, hand scale, let's say 10, and these guys will work as expected. Currently, this mouse spline is set to be seen in the viewport in full shape. You can change that to a lines and, uh, and things will be much more easier to see. So this is in fact a real geometry. If I hit uh, NB or enable grass shading lines, you can see that this is really, really dense. And uh, now these steps will be explained really easily. So let's uh, put 50, maybe even a little bit uh, lower, 25. And uh, always make sure you use minimum amount of uh, geometry needed. So maybe you could create uh, some sort of a sun or stuff like that. So 
very very powerful how about this imagine doing this by hand this is uh, simply a nightmare even if it is uh, possible but i highly doubt it so imagine the possibilities and uh, this mouse spline is a generator so that means that uh, other generators can work with it we can actually get rid of this uh, material maybe create a uh, something interesting let's say like uh, maybe this color we will apply that to our sweep nerves now as i was saying this guy works with any other generator so let's have some fun with the cloner and uh, maybe this time we will clone the light so i have to set some settings here for the light otherwise it won't be really visible until i do that so let's uh, enable this visible option and uh, this radius you can see if i do a render now that that light is really wide and uh, i have to tune this outer distance to let's say maybe 50 let's go even lower maybe 30 and if i render now you will see that this light is uh, much smaller which is in fact very good and um, we will now drop it under cloner and uh, since this mouse plane is an object we will clone it on the object and drop the mouse plane inside so now we have all these lights cloned onto mouse plane so i will just choose one and i will offset it and uh, notice that uh, if i get to 99 percent i'm on the end of the spline if i will enter 100 it will snap to the beginning that is because of this loop guys so if you turn it off 100 percent will mean the end of the actual spline now let's do a test render and see what do we have and uh, this is the result and actually we could uh, make this a little bit more interesting and add a certain lens effect so maybe we will add a Let's try this purple one. I think that would be really good enough. And uh, the brightness is okay, but, but the scale of these guys should be lower. So let's say 50%, maybe even 30, like this. And uh, yeah, th this should uh, be acceptable. This, uh, in fact, looks really nice. And I'm pretty sure you can already imagine lots of lots of uh, applications for this guy and how flexible how vast this uh, most blind system is so we maybe go a step further with this setup since i want to show you that uh, you can load particle modifiers here so particle modifiers in uh, release 13 are here under simulate particles so let's actually tear off this menu and uh, choose any of these guys so maybe i will go with the turbulence so if i hit turbulence unfortunately cino 4 d doesn't automatically load particle modifiers into fields so you will have to do that manually so i will drag this into fields and make sure you enable include so it will include this turbulence into a simulation so you can see that uh, this guy changed and uh, if you press play you will see that effect live and this is a little bit uh, odd so let's increase the scale something like uh, 500 will do so let's enter 500 here and uh, this is a really really interesting effect and i think i will lower this uh, frequency let's go even lower so maybe like uh, 35 or something like that so the effects you can achieve with this are simply stunning so something like this how about this this looks really really cool so maybe we could even uh, get rid of this uh, sweep nerves and once again load a uh, hair material go with the hair material and uh, turn everything off uh, 
get rid of one of these guys, load maybe a red color and I will apply it to my Mo spline. So if I hit render now, you can see that uh, this is somewhat of a different effect. And uh, if you were maybe wondering why these guys are on the middle of the spline, even though we set it uh, 100% offset here. The reason is this uh, two effector. So, because the time effector is really moving this spline in time, and uh, this cloner should happen after these two guys. I really hope that makes sense. So, if I move this guy down, you will see the difference. So, now it's aware of uh, that uh, position information value from these two guys that are applied to most plans so this is really important those priorities can really drive you insane especially in rigging but uh, in MoGraph that can happen too so now if I press play we have a really nice and interesting effect so it can be some sort of a crazy dimension portal or a deep sea jellyfishes or something like that let's in fact render a really really small animation so i will just uh, set anti-aliasing here to best let's leave it at that and i will make a preview so let's go with double of this size and uh, we can leave everything else uh, at default i will hit ok and uh, we'll give it some time and pause the video until this guy calculates uh, the preview so and here we are at the end and uh, let me scale this uh, picture viewer and let's hit play and see how that looks like. So this is a really interesting effect and uh, I really encourage you to explore this uh, most plan because it's simply mind-blowingly fantastic. Now let me show you this most plan uh, spline mode and uh, let's in fact get rid of all this so we have a nice clean start and uh, in this mode in this spline mode any spline you load here you see we don't have access to simple settings anymore so they are gone now we can load any spline so let's uh, create some spline some arbitrary spline like this so i can draw one and uh, once loaded in a source spline that spline turns into a most plan because in this mode when it's not assigned to most plan you really cannot do much with it so once that it's uh, turned into a most plan you can do a whole lot of things with it so just to prove you that this is a most plan now let me show you how these guys work and uh, if this happens or you, if you simply want to reverse where the start is you will have to simply select all points on that original spline and do a reverse sequence command now this should work really as you would expect so that's a really nice uh, tip to know and once again there are so many applications of uh, everything i show you you just have to think in that way so let's create a particle emitter so let me just establish some values here so let's go with uh, 100 and i will scale down this emitter and uh, i believe this question popped up on forum a few times so let me resolve this with a really simple setup and what i want to do here is i want to align this guy to the spline so all the basic tools and tags you can find here can work with this most plan so it's really imperative for you to know a few things about Sina for the in general otherwise you won't be able to utilize MoGraph to full extent so now it's just a question of thinking of this most spline as a regular spline so let's uh, load the spline here and you will see this guy pop into the position of spline now you don't have to do anything with this uh, align to spline anymore because everything now is controlled with this 
most fine. So if we press play, and uh, in fact, let's uh, create a simple animation. So I will add a keyframe for start at the frame zero. Maybe I will go to the last frame and uh, let's go with 50%. Otherwise, it could be a little bit too fast. So keyframe here. Now I have a burning fuse and it looks a little bit odd because of this setting here. Currently, it's generating the most spline from this guy on the vertices. So if you set this to even, you won't have that uh, crazy behavior. So imagine this uh, as a burning fuse that will reach uh, some sort of a bomb or stuff like that. So very, very interesting stuff. Now, if you remember from the beginning of this lesson, I was talking about this turtle mode and you will notice a small uh, sort of a tree-like object, but uh, let's just have a quick glance of these guys and uh, we will cover this at the very end of our training because I believe then this will look a little less scary than it is uh, looking now and uh, in this turtle mode or L system mode there is a potential for creating virtually anything and uh, although it is targeted for creating plant-like structures and uh, fractal structures it can be used uh, in uh, many other ways so we will do advanced setups at the very end of our training now we will apply everything that we learned so far and uh, we will create some generic setups uh, which can show you the real world application of MoGraph and it's a fantastic tool. So we are now starting with mini projects in our next lesson.